Well, it's 3.55 a.m. in the morning, a fresh morning in Istanbul. We're just about to head off to the airport and take a flight to Adana, which is south of Turkey. We'll meet 43 Turks heading for the refugee camps this morning. So we're just about to head off. Uh, not had much sleep this evening, but uh, I think the adrenaline and the, and the passion of what we're doing will keep us going. As we left Istanbul heading for Adana, I felt myself becoming excited as I was about to become part of this flower distribution and see firsthand the reality that is Syria. The first step of the journey was a press conference at the distribution centre. Well, we've just arrived here in Adana, the distribution centre of the flower that's heading for Syria later on this afternoon. 43 trucks are lined up, fully packed with 1 million kilos. That's a thousand tonnes of flour. We're going to follow this convoy later on and watch them spread over the borders in Syria and take the flour. It is a tough job not only carrying anything but actually going into somewhere like Syria where, as we know, there's a lot of difficulty taking place up for people. And uh, we pray they arrive there safely this one today. There is a partnership between us and our brothers and sisters in Syria, the partnership of the Ummah. Behind us we see 43 trucks loaded with 1,000 tons of flour or 1 million kilos. It might not mean much to us practically, but for our brothers and sisters in Syria, it means that we can produce nearly 2 million loaves of bread. Getting this amount of sport together is absolutely phenomenal, but I'll tell you what's really even more amazing is that all of these drivers are ultimately risking their lives by going into Syria. 43 of them, they've all got families, they've all got a life to look forward to. They're not even Syrian. So the journey began. It was going to be a long ride ahead. We needed to travel four and a half hours to reach the Syria border crossing, from where each truck had their own mission, and that was to deliver the flour to their destination as quickly and safely as possible. We're literally 30 minutes away from the border. The convoy is just behind us. And you know, there's a real buzz around the convoy and everybody that was involved today. Now, if you're wondering why flour, why 43 trucks full of flour? Well, flour is actually a staple diet for the Syrians. And during the civil crisis, unfortunately, many bread manufacturers were bombed. So tonight, when we're sending this flour into the country, it really is sending a message of hope and helping the Syrians to realize that we want to make bread and not war. I was to leave the convoy for the night at the Syrian border and catch up with them at their distribution the very next day. That evening, I went to visit a refugee camp at the border on the Turkish side. This is where I met Alia, a 33-year-old mother, and asked her how she ended up in this situation. There were bombardments from airstrikes, tanks, rockets. They destroyed our houses with our families inside them, even our children. They were dying whilst in our arms. He's one of eight children. They don't go to school. They sleep all day. They're ill. She spends most of her day trying to wash their clothes and just look after them. Hasn't heard from her husband for nearly two weeks. There's no communication whatsoever. It's hard going. It's, it's crowded. It's difficult. And it's basically, there's not enough refugee camps. And the kids, you know, they were just so delighted just to get a balloon. Some of them got a toy, but you can see the clear sadness on their faces to have to run out of their homes overnight, literally, to a very different lifestyle. It's hard. <laughs> 